Hi, my name is Wim or Mr. Knitwear and together with Dan Dennis I'm going to take you on a very nice knitting adventure because we're going to make this or in your uh, own color combination this lovely scarf that is double knitted it's called the Honeycomb Your Heritage scarf and we designed it especially for the advent period so the four weeks before Christmas we're going to take you on a little knitting trip to do so you'll have to know how to cast on how to do double knitting and how to cast off uh, this double knitting so we'll, we're going to make a gauge swatch and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to cast on how to do double knitting and how to cast off and this is a very lovely edge if I say so myself this little piece of gauge swatch has a very nice nicely finished edge that's not what I'm going to show you in this tutorial in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make the more um, rustic looking edge on a double knitted piece so this is the easier way to do the, the sides of a double knitting work. If you're interested in this, just keep watching. Okay, so I'll explain first what we'll need to do the double knitting gauge swatch. You'll need a pattern. You can uh, print that from the Lang Yarns website. And you can see that we have a positive and a negative image of the pattern. So you can uh, both see the front and the back of the gauge swatch. Um, the one on the left, so the dark pattern, is the one that we'll use uh, for the odd number of rows and the even rows we'll be reading from the lighter uh, part of the gauge swatch pattern. The other thing you'll need is a straight knitting needle, a long straight knitting needle. And you'll need that because uh, the casting on is a very different structure from a normal cast on. And if you would use a circular needle and the structure of your cast on would slide to the cable, then you would lose the entire structure. So especially for the shawl and actually also for the gauge swatch, it's important to use a straight knitting needle uh, for the cast on. After that, you can choose if you want to keep knitting on uh, long straight needles or uh, maybe change to the circular needles. I'll be knitting the gauge swatch in the Merino 120 uh, by Lang Yarns. Um, then I'll use a four millimeter needle for the cast on and also for uh, knitting. If you use the Atlantis yarn, you'll need a 3.5 millimeter needle. Then we'll use two uh, yarns, two yarns with a nice contrast color so you can see the design of the double knitting. And the first thing you'll have to do is uh, tell yourself or decide for yourself which color will be your main color and which color will be your contrast color because in the pattern that will be described as main color and contrast color. In my case, I'll be using the red yarn as the main color and the white as the contrast color. I'm going to make a slip knot using both ends of the yarn and you don't have to uh, you don't have to make a long tail because you just need enough yarn to uh, to work it in later when you finish knitting. So I make a slip knot with both yarns at the same time and then I slip them onto the needle. I slip it with the main color strand on the right so the main color goes onto the needle first and then the white uh, the white stitch follows the white stitch is on the left for this tutorial uh, the order of these two stitches isn't very important i'm right-handed so i keep the knitting needle in my right hand i uh, keep control of the two stitches that are on the needle by putting my index finger on there and then as you can see i split the two yarns, the two working yarns with my thumb and my index finger of my left hand. Um, the main color goes over my left uh, index finger to the back and the white color, the contrast color goes over my thumb. And in this way I can do the cast on. We'll be casting on uh, stitches in two different colors. So first I'll do a red stitch, then I'll do a white stitch. And um, the red stitches will be knit stitches, the white stitches will be purled. 
you can see I'm going under two threads, so under the contrast and under the main color. I'm coming back over the main color and under the contrast color. And in this way, you can see there's a red stitch, a stitch in the main color that appeared on my knitting needle. I'll keep it tight on the needle, put my index finger on there. Now I'm going to make a stitch with the contrast color thread. Uh, to make a pearl stitch with the contrast color, I take my knitting needle and I go under the main color then under the contrast color. I go back over the contrast color and under the main color. And then you'll see a little bit of a mess on your knitting needle. That's very normal and that's uh, very, uh, that's not a problem. You want to make uh, the little knot go down on your knitting needle uh, f uh, through the front of your knitting needle. And you do that by pulling on the main color thread over your index finger so that the little knot slides down over the front of your needle. You see the little knot is on the, on the bottom of the needle. All those little knots need to be on the bottom of the needle so you get a nice finished edge. Then I'm going to cast on a knitted stitch with the main color. So I start under the contrast color, under the main color. I come back over the main color and under the contrast color. Then I have a red stitch, a stitch in the main color on my needles. To make a stitch with the contrast color, I start by going under the main color, under the contrast color. I go back over the contrast color, under the main color. And then with my index finger of my left hand, I pull on the main color thread so that the little knot slides down to the bottom side of the knitting needle. One more time. I go under, under, over, under. That's the same procedure every time. The one thing that changes is the direction in which you start. To make a stitch in the contrast color, you start under the main color strand. You go under, under, over, under. And then with your index finger of your left hand, you pull the stitch tight and snug so that the little knot goes to the, the bottom of your knitting needle. So I go under, under, over, under. That's a stitch in the main color. And then I do the opposite thing. So I start at the top and I go under, under, over, under. And you see, I've got this thing figured out. So I automatically pull on the, on the main color thread to make it nice and neat. Then the question is, how many stitches do you cast on? Well, if you look at the gauge uh, swatch pattern, you can see that there are 21 stitches on each side of the scarf or uh, on each side of the gauge swatch. So you'll have to cast on 21 stitches for the front and 21 stitches for the back. That's an easy, uh, easy little uh, math uh, problem that we can solve. It's uh, 42 stitches in total. Now for this tutorial, there will be two stitches uh, added on the front and two stitches added on the back. Those stitches are not on the pattern. So you can't see them on the pattern. They're not, uh, they're not depicted on the pattern. So you'll have to think them uh, or, or imagine that they're there. Um, as you can see, I'm holding my yarn in the wrong way here, but uh, I'll fix that in a minute before I start casting on again. You'll need to cast on uh, 46 stitches in total. So you'll make two stitches by doing a slip knot, and then you'll knit a stitch or cast on a stitch knitwise with the main color and purlwise with the contrast color for 42 stitches. That's not counting the first two. So you'll have 44 stitches on your needles when you stop casting on. But the last two stitches, so number 45 and 46, you'll make in this fashion.
you'll leave the two strands of yarn hanging down and you'll wrap them around your thumb. I'll show you how. So there are two stitches with a slip knot, then 42 stitches casted on knitwise and purlwise. And then you'll make two additional stitches by twisting the yarn around your thumb like this. I'll show you how not to do it, not like that. So you wrap your thumb and then you put the tip of your needle through the loop on your thumb. You remove your thumb and then you'll pull that snug. So you'll do a reverse cast on with the two strands of yarn together. So you make two additional stitches. Those two stitches will form the uh, edge of your double knitting. And those stitches are also not depicted, not, uh, not shown on the pattern. I turn my knitting needle and now you can choose if you want to continue working with long straight needles or you can uh, start working with your circular needle. And the first two stitches of every row will be knitted together with the two strands of yarn together. So you put your knitting needle into two stitches at a time. You'll wrap two yarns at a time, so you make two new stitches. That's what you do for every uh, first two stitches of every row, no matter if you're on an odd or an even, even number of rows. Um, you always make the first stitch, the edge stitch, the same way. So knitting with two strands of yarn in the first two stitches together. Then we'll do the, the second row, because the first row of our uh, pattern is also the cast on row. Now we'll do the second row, which is an even row, and we'll read that on that side of the pattern. And you can see that all the stitches have the same color, so it's very easy. The first stitch is a contrast color stitch, and that's what we want, because we're looking at the back of our gauge swatch, and you'll knit into that stitch, just using the contrast color yarn. Then, very importantly, put both strands of yarn between the knitting needles and only using the main color, you purl a stitch with the main color. But both, both strands are uh, on this side of the work. Then you put them between the needles to the back of the work and you continue. You knit a stitch with a contrast color, like that. You slip both yarns between the needles so that you can purl a stitch with the main color. And it's very important that you uh, slip those both those yarns every time you switch sides. And you'll be switching sides a lot when you do double knitting because it's a knit stitch followed by a purled stitch every time. So both of the strands of yarn go to the front and you purl a stitch in the main color. And if you have difficulties putting your needle into the front loop to purl a stitch, there's an easy trick to uh, do this differently. You just put your knitting needle through the back loop of the stitch, like that. And then very elegantly, you switch both needles uh, from uh, you flip them over and then purl a stitch in the main color. Let's do that again. You can also see that I'm holding both strands so you don't have to um, peel away uh, the strand that you're not going to use. I just always use both strands when I'm doing uh, this double knitting throwing style. So I knit a stitch in the contrast color. I flip two yarns to the front and I purl a stitch with the main color. I can also show you uh, the continental knitting style. That's the style that I prefer. And you'll see in a minute uh, why I prefer it, because it's uh, a lot easier, a lot faster for me to knit. So I put both strands on the index finger of my left hand and I knit a stitch just using the contrast color. Then I tilt my hands so that both strands come to the front of the work. And then I purl a stitch just using 
the main color yarn. They automatically flip back to the work and I knit a stitch in white, then I purl a stitch in red. I knit one in white And the trick with switching your needles also works when you're doing continental style. I purl one with the main color. Every time I knit a stitch, that stitch will appear on the front of the work. And by the front of the work, I mean the side of the work that you're seeing at that moment. At this moment, I'm looking at the back side of my gauge swatch. So when I knit a stitch with my contrast color, that stitch will end up on the back side on the yeah on the back side of my gauge swatch every stitch that you purl will end up on the other side than the side that you're looking at at that moment that's a little bit tricky now you can tell this is the last stitch no this is the last stitch that i'm going to knit on this side then there's one more stitch to purl on this side because the edges are made differently. I'll keep the two yarns uh, at the purl side and I'll slip the last two stitches purl wise. So with the two yarns in front of my knitting, I'll slip two stitches at a time purl wise. Then you turn your work and those two slipped stitches that are now in the beginning of a new row. Those will be the edge stitches that I'm going to knit just the same way I did before. I'm putting my uh, straight knitting needle to the side because I prefer knitting on the circular needles. And now we'll start the third row of our gauge swatch. And this is an interesting row because uh, this is the first time that you'll see a pattern appear. If we want to make a gauge swatch that's just red on one side and white on the other side, I'll have to knit all stitches in red and purl all stitches in white on this side, knit all stitches in white and purl all stitches in red when I'm working the back side of the gauge swatch. But now I'm going to make four red stitches, so four stitches in the main color. And when I knit one stitch in the main color, Immediately after, I have to purl a stitch in the contrast color. So you'll see this is a stitch in the main color, that's a stitch in the contrast color. And that's a pattern we'll always repeat. We'll knit a stitch, we'll purl a stitch. After I knit a stitch in the main color, I'm going to purl a stitch in the contrast color. I'll do that four times after I've made the edge. The edge stitch is always the same. I will always be knitting two stitches together with the two strands of yarn together. Then I'll make four red stitches. I'll do that first. So I put my needle into the first two stitches at the same time. I wrap two yarns at the same time. So there are two new stitches coming from two stitches. Then I'll make four red stitches. So that's a main color stitch knitted, a contrast color stitch purled, and that will end up on the other side of my double knitting. I knit a stitch in the main color and I purl a stitch in the contrast color. I knit a third stitch in the main color and right after that a contrast color stitch purled and then the fourth stitch is knit in red and right after that I purl one in white. So now I made uh, an edge stitch and then four red stitches. One, two, three, four. After those four stitches that I now made, I have to make three stitches in the opposite color. And to do that, I'll just knit the stitches with the contrast color. And after a knit stitch in the contrast color, I'll be purling a stitch in the main color. So I'm not switching up the knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl sequence. I'll always knit first and purl after. But now in this red stitch, I'm going to knit with the white yarn. And in the white stitch, I'm going to purl with the red yarn. 
Another little tip I can give you, if you see in the pattern that there's an, a little box in white above a box that is red or gray in this uh, case, then you'll have to do the opposite of what's on your knitting needles. So the three white stitches that I have to knit now are above three dark stitches on the pattern. So I'll have to do the opposite of what's on my needles. In the red stitch, I'll knit with a white yarn. Then I'll purl in the white yarn with a red stitch. So that's one white stitch made. I'll knit with the contrast color. I'll purl with the main color. So exactly the opposite of what's on my knitting needle. I'll knit in the contrast color and I purl a third time in the main color. And that way there will appear three stitches on the front of my gauge swatch, three stitches that will be white, and the red stitches that I purled will appear on the back side of the gauge swatch. That's the main color stitch. And then I always count stitches by naming them the color of the right of the two loops. So those are four red stitches and then white, white, white. Four red stitches, three white. The next thing I have to do is knit seven red stitches with in between seven white stitches that are purled. So I knit a stitch in the main color I knit one in the main color, purl one in contrast. Knit one main color, purl one in the contrast color. A third stitch with a contrast color. A fourth. A fifth stitch in the main color. A sixth stitch. And then the last, the seventh stitch, will also be a red stitch, main color stitch knitted, and a contrast color stitch purled. Then the stitches change color again, so I have to make three more light stitches, stitches in the contrast color. So in the red stitch on my left needle, I'll knit the white stitch again. I'll flip the two strands of yarn in between the needles and in the white stitch I'll purl with the main color, so with the red yarn. I'm also uh, showing you again how to do this throwing style for the people who prefer this method. I knit a white stitch and I purl a red stitch. That's the second one. And then one more. I knit a white stitch and purl one in red. And that way the three white stitches that I knitted will be at the front of my gauge swatch and the three red stitches will be in the back. Also, it's very important to know that it's possible, it's very likely that you'll have some stitches of the same color next to each other. So you can see two white stitches, that's very, very normal because the first of those two is a purled stitch, the second of those two is a knitted stitch in the same color. If you ever see three, three stitches of the same color on your needles, then you did something wrong and you'll have to be uh, thinking a little bit, so knitting back. I'll end this uh, row with four red stitches, one, two, three, four, and then there will be two stitches left to make the edge. So a main color stitch knitted, and you'll see two strands of red next to each other, or two stitches in red. I'll purl one in the contrast color, knit one with the main color, and immediately after purl one with the contrast color, you knit one with the main color, and after a few rows, you don't have to think about this uh, procedure anymore. You'll just do it automatically. The last stitch that I'm going to knit will be knitted with red and immediately after that I purl with the white. 
I'll keep the two yarns in the front of the work and I slip the last two stitches purlwise. That way they don't get twisted. I turn my work and immediately at the beginning of the next row those two stitches will be the edge stitches. You can also uh, start to see that this will be the lighter side of our gauge swatch and this will be the darker side, the main color side of our gauge swatch. So you can always see on your knitting what part of the gauge swatch you're, you'll be knitting. Row number four is an even row, so we'll read that on the lighter side of the pattern. And you can see that we will be starting by uh, making three light stitches, so three contrast color stitches. You can also start to see a little bit of the design. Uh, you don't see that on your knitting needle because you can see both the stitches of the front and the back of your work on your knitting needle. But right under there, you can see uh, the pattern starting to emerge. And in a few rows, you'll see it much clearer than now. So again, for every stitch on the back of your gauge swatch, there's an opposite stitch on the front of your gauge, gauge swatch. Sorry, Every stitch that you knit in one color, you'll have to purl in the opposite color. And by changing up uh, the direction, by changing up the order of the colors that you're knitting, you can make a design in your double knitting. So I'll start with a edge stitch that's not depicted on the pattern here. And then I'll do three contrast color stitches that I'll knit. Then one in the main color, three in the contrast color, one in the main color, then five stitches in the contrast color, one in the main color, three in the contrast color, one in the main color, and three to end with a edge stitch. I'll start with a edge stitch that I'll knit in the two first loops on the needle with the two yarns held together. That's something we'll always do in this easy edge gauge swatch. Man, that's difficult to say. <laughs> so uh, you put your knitting needle in the first two loops and you wrap the, both the strands of yarn to make two new loops. And then we'll do three stitches in the contrast color. So I'll knit one stitch in the contrast color. I purl a stitch in the main color. Second stitch needs to be white. And then I purl one in red. The stitches that you purl are automatically going to be shown on the other side, the other side of your gauge, gauge swatch. I don't like to call them the front and the back because your double knitting doesn't really have a front and a back. But the front is the, the side that you're looking at at this moment, and the back is the side that's turned away from you. So I made an edge stitch and then a white stitch, a white stitch, a white stitch. Now I need one red stitch, so one stitch in the main color. I knit one stitch in red and I purl a stitch in white. And it's exactly the opposite of the stitch under there, so you can keep it in mind. That's two stitches in white, that's the third stitch in white. Then I need to make a red stitch again. And again, you can see two strands of red and two stitches white next to each other. That's perfectly normal because that's a white knitted stitch and a red purled stitch and then a red knitted stitch and a white purled stitch. So it's very normal that two stitches next to each other are in the same color. But if you see three strands of the same color next to each other, then there's a problem. I make a red stitch to get the honeycomb design with a white stitch next to it. And then I'll need five white stitches. That's one, two, three, 
three. four and five then I'll need a red stitch so I knit that and I purl on white three white stitches so one two and three I need another red stitch and then I'm going to end by making three white stitches and an edge stitch so white and red white and red I knit one with white I purl one with red I keep the strands of yarn to the front of the work and I I slip them purlwise always slip the stitches purlwise and now you can even uh, see uh, or you can see even better that the pattern is forming on your network three stitches on the back three stitches on the front so the design that uh, will be shown on the front will automatically uh, be shown on the back of your work just in opposite colors. And that's the fun part about the double knitting. One more row, so I'll do the edge stitch by knitting the first two stitches with the two strands of yarn held together. I'll make two dark stitches, one light, five dark, one light, three dark, one light, five dark, one light, two dark, and then the edge stitch at the end. I always like to uh, memorize a pattern uh, so that I don't have to look at my uh, at my pattern or my paper pattern too often so I'll start with two dark stitches two main color stitches uh, also you can see that the direction where you grab your yarn isn't very important because if the yarns cross each other that'll figure itself out in the middle of your double knitting and you won't see anything in your double knitting so I'll just go ahead and knit this fifth row. The fifth row is an odd row, so I'll read that on the, on the left pattern. That's a white stitch, so then there will be three red stitches, one, two, and three. Then there will be a white stitch, five more red stitches, one, two, three, four, five, another white stitch to make the design, two more red stitches, one and two, keep the two yarns in the front of the work and I slip the last two stitches purlwise. You can't really decide what order the edge stitches will be in, that's why we call it the easy but the rustic uh, finish. If you think this is going to be a little sloppy or a little messy and you like to finish your work a little better, then there's another tutorial how to make a neat but a little diff more difficult edge on your double knitting. So I'll just keep continue. Uh, I'll just continue knitting uh, the gauge swatch, and I'll see you back when I get to the top of the gauge swatch, so I can also show you how to do a pretty cast off. You see, I finished the gauge swatch. The only thing that's left is to do a, a nice cast off, and the fun thing about casting off, uh, you can see this is the 
gauge swatch I made with the neatly finished edges. So if you think this looks prettier, then just go to the other tutorial where I'll show you how to do this. We don't need any yarn to do the cast off. There's a, there's a special trick to doing the cast off for double knitting. So I'll have to uh, slide my gauge swatch to the other side of my needles. And because I'm working on circular needles, that will be very easy. If you're working on long straight needles and you want to uh, do the cast off, you'll have to slip all your stitches um, purlwise from one needle to the other, because this is not the edge that we're going to start casting off on. So I cut my yarn. I leave a little tail hanging for, uh, for sewing it in later. I want to work this side of my knitting. That's the side I'll start casting off on. So I turn my work and I'll just pull my entire knitting needle and slide the knitting to the other side. You can see this is the end where I stopped knitting. So I'll do the cast off starting on this side and I'll slip the first stitch knit wise. So I'm going to enter my uh, right knitting needle from left to right. So the stitch gets twisted on my right needle. Then I slip the next stitch purlwise. I take my left knitting needle. I insert it in the first stitch that I slipped and I pass it over the second stitch and off the needle. The next stitch I slip knitwise and I cast off. Then I slip stitch purlwise and I cast off. I slip one knitwise and cast off. And I slip a stitch purlwise and I cast off. And you keep doing this. Slip one knitwise and cast off. And you can see if a stitch is a knit or a purl stitch. So you uh, can actually not really make a mistake here. You could make a mistake, but it's very easy to see what you have to do. The next stitch is a knit stitch, so I slip it knitwise. The next stitch is a purl stitch, so I slip it purlwise. And by doing this with two colors and in two different directions, I mean knitwise and purlwise and knitwise and purlwise, you get a very nice finished edge, a very nice pattern. I'll show you in a minute. You slip one purlwise and you cast off, you slip one knitwise and you cast off. Slip on purlwise and you cast off. And that way the top of your knitting will have a, a very nice zigzag motif in it with two different colors. I really like this way of casting off. The other nice thing about casting off this way is that you use the tension that is already in your stitches, in your knitwork. Uh, to cast off so your cast off won't be too tight and it won't be too loose. You also uh, slip the last stitch knitwise and you cast it off. And then you pull the uh, last two strands that you cut earlier through the last loop. The only thing you need to do then is uh, very easy, it's very simple, that's just weaving in your ends. And to weave in your ends that's very simple. This is our gauge swatch. If you've been using a lot of colors to make the shawl, uh, to make the scarf, then you'll have a lot of uh, ends to weave in. And if you only used two colors, then there won't be as many uh, ends, loose ends to weave in. So you just use a tapestry needle. I'll show you with a knitting needle in what direction I like to weave in my ends. You don't put the tapestry needle through your uh, knitwork, but you put it in between the front and the back. So there's a, a lot of stitching or a lot of uh, yarn going from back to front and front to the back in between. If you weave in your ends in three different directions, then uh, there won't be any need for tying a knot or for making any other um, fixing magic tricks or something, the, the ends will just stay woven in. And that's the way you make the gauge swatch for the Honeycomb Your Heritage Shawl. I hope you have an enormous ton of fun. 
Um, I hope the gauge swatch is working out for you. Making a gauge swatch isn't as important for uh, knowing how uh, wide and how long your shawl is going to be because the scarf can be a few centimeters or a few inches wider or smaller. But it's very important to know that the size of the knitting needles that you'll be using makes a nice flowy fabric. So if it's too tight, then you'll have to go up a needle size. If it's too loose, then you'll have to go down a needle size or maybe two or maybe more. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any questions just type it in the comments or let us know. If you enjoyed this tutorial you can give it a thumbs up. You can also keep following me here on YouTube but you can also follow me and then Dennis on social media by uh, following Dan Dennis or Mr. Knitbear or our joint account that's Happily Knitting. I hope you have a lovely time. Bye.